this tutorial will show you how to create a scrolling credits effect in the Doodly animation software. We are using version 2.4.7, but this effect will work on any Doodly version. Doodly does not natively support this type of effect currently, but with a little bit of ingenuity, we can easily make this effect for your Doodly animation videos. Skills required to make it successfully through this tutorial are being familiar with the Doodly pan and zoom settings. If you do not possess this knowledge, please watch the basic Doodly tutorials before continuing with the rest of this video. Using a snipping tool like the Windows Snip and Sketch Utility. Computer navigation skills so you can find and import images into Doodly. There are some limitations when attempting to make this effect. The pan and zoom settings within Doodly use a constrained proportion resizing method so we cannot resize a single side of the start or end boxes without affecting the other sides. This type of resizing methodology will impose an extreme limitation to how many characters can be utilized within a single line of text, how many rows of text can be utilized in total, and how wide your text can be when creating this effect and still allow the text to be readable on the canvas. The number of characters and text rows allowed will be dependent upon the size of your displayed font on the canvas. It is vectorized so you can zoom in quite a bit to be able to read your text. The pan and zoom settings area has very limited capabilities when working with the start and end boxes. There is no grid or rulers to line up anything inside this area. You can only resize the boxes in this area, so you will need to eyeball and guess where you place your start and end boxes. Doodly has a severe issue of constraining the timeline with the amount of time the asset should take to fully display on the screen. When attempting to increase the amount of time in the timeline, the software automatically adds duration time to all your assets. For our effect, we need to get around this massive software limitation. We will take a snippet of the canvas using our Windows Snip and Sketch tool, import that into Doodly, drag that onto the canvas, and use that image to keep the time duration we require on the timeline. Doodly has a major bug within its pan and zoom utility. If you make your start and end boxes too small, it will severely lag the software during development and crash the software during rendering. If you've got the skills and understand the limitations, let's get started. Step 1. Setting up the snippet. Use the Windows Snip and Sketch utility or some other snipping program to grab a small portion of the canvas. Save this to your computer. Import this into Doodly, drag this onto the canvas, and always keep this as your bottom layer. Step 2. Setting up our pan and zoom areas. Create a pan and zoom effect by clicking the plus sign at the top layer of the timeline. Stretch out the timeline by hovering the cursor over the line to the right side until your cursor turns into a double arrow. Left click your mouse and hold the mouse button down and drag your mouse to the right. The longer the length of time for your pan and zoom, the slower the scrolling effect will appear. Single click on the pan and zoom area on the timeline to open the settings and then click unlock start. It is easier to work with the pan and zoom utility if you click show preview. This will take away half of the screen real estate, but you obtain a start and end button where you can click back and forth to see the different locations of your start and end boxes in an attempt to line them up properly. Click one of the transform control icons to begin to resize your start box. If you mess up, do not attempt to undo with control Z, as it does not work in the pan and zoom settings. If you use this, will undo items in your timeline and not the pan and zoom settings. Once you have your start box resized, move it where you want it. For this tutorial, I'm going to move it to the top middle. Repeat this process with your end box and try and make it the same or similar size as the start box. Move your end box to the opposite side of the canvas placement as your start. For this tutorial, I'm going to place my end box at the bottom middle. If you're happy with the placements, click Apply. Step 3. 
Placing our text onto the canvas. I have used four different sections of text for this tutorial. I've turned on word wrap for the text that goes more than one line. All of your text should have zero second delay and zero second duration set in the layers section. It is important to note the closer you place your text to the edges of the pan and zoom start and end boxes without crossing over those boxes, the more duration length you need to add to your placeholder snippet. The maximum time on your snippet should be equal to the pan and zoom time length minus the extra time at the end in the scene settings. If my pan and zoom time is set to 10 seconds and the extra time at the end in the scene settings is set to the default of one half second, then the maximum time necessary in my snippet image holder is 9.5 seconds. The further away you are from the start and finish boxes, the less time you will need on the image timeline. Doodly is smart enough to know that when you set all your text assets to zero second delay and zero second duration, you can now start to drag and drop the timeline and it will only add duration time to the placeholder image. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you had as much fun watching it as I had making it. Make sure to hit those like, subscribe, and share buttons for more Doodly video tutorials.